Hey everyone, this is Greg Benz with a, another Luminosity Masking Tutorial. Uh, in this video, I actually want to start all the way back at the uh, foundations. One of the one of the questions I get a lot about luminosity masks is, "Hey Greg, help me understand, you know, what is a luminosity mask?" I, you know, it's just it's kind of an overwhelming concept. So I want to start at the the beginning, um, and to get there, um, I think we first need to talk about kind of uh, basic masking. And whenever you talk about masks, you really need to talk about selections. They're they're kind of uh, almost interchangeable. So we're going to start with that um, on this image of the Sagrada Familia from Barcelona, or uh, if you want to sound like an American tourist, you say Barcelona, which to a Spaniard probably sounds like you just burnt your uh, tongue on some coffee. But let's uh, let's start with this image, and just start with uh, some basic selections. So. Um, if you aren't at all familiar with selections, um, basically there's a few different ways to get at them, but you have these tools here that'll let you pick uh, different shapes. Those are kind of uh, default uh, squares and, and circles and such. Uh, here we have the lasso tool, which allows you to draw more complex shapes. Uh, and then there's the magic wand and the quick selection tool, which will actually help you pick um, areas based on the, uh, the the pixel values, the brightness values. So I'm just going to start with the uh, real basic shape here with this uh, rectangle and show kind of the idea. So if we make a selection, we'll see these marching ants. And what's happening is we've selected this area in the inside and the area outside of it is not selected. And what a selection is doing is modifying what you can do to the pixels on a layer. So if I want to paint on this layer, if I were to, uh, let's just remove this for a second. If I were to just basically paint with a uh, standard brush, we've got some green here. I'm going to just take a brush and just draw on my image, right? So um, it painted everywhere that uh, I moved the brush. So let's see what happens if we go and undo that. And I'm just hitting M to go to the marquee tool here. And now let's just make another selection. So now with the selection, it should uh, mark this area as selected or an area that I can modify and the area outside of it is not selected. So it's basically protected. So we go back to our brush with the B key. And if I try and draw outside of it, I can't get anything. But as I come across the selection, I'm able to paint. Um, so the, the selection is basically uh, just protecting these pixels on the outside. Um, I could have taken this selection if I wanted to and just uh, invert it. And now you can see the marching ants on the outside and I can paint on the outside. So um, that's one quick way that um, you can you can just simply guide how you're painting on an image because uh, freehand painting can be, uh, can be pretty tricky, may not be that precise. And so selection helps you to, uh, to guide what the paint tool does. Um, kind of the, uh, the opposite idea of that, and I'm just going to undo what we've done here, is a mask. Um, so to show that, let's, uh, let's just create a new layer. Uh, we'll just call it this the green layer and going to uh, paint on it with our paint tool. Let's see, where's the, uh, the gradient tool? Here we go, the uh, paint bucket tool. So when I paint, uh, I've just made this whole layer uh, entirely green. But if I want to show parts of it through, I can create a, a mask on it. And so this mask here is showing completely white. Um, yeah, but if I paint on it with black, and I'm just going to use a, a black brush, wherever I paint black, everything comes through. And the basic idea with a mask is that white reveals so you can see the, the layer and black conceals is in it makes this transparent so what I've got now is basically this big green layer but I can only see it where it's been revealed with the white I can't see it uh, in the black areas in the center and if we were just kind of to move this around to illustrate the idea you can see that you know, you've just got this you know green area on top of the actual photograph uh, but I can only see the white areas um, so that's, you know, that, those are the extremes, right? Where white is completely visible and black is, is not, but you can actually go in between that. So what if we take this brush and we just simply, um, slow down the flow, which means it's not going to paint, um, everything all at once. It's going to build up progressively. So if I start using my brush now, you can see that, uh, I'm getting some kind of transparent, uh, effect as I, you know, paint more and more and eventually, you know, uh, if I speed this up a little bit, you'd basically get back to, uh, you know, completely visible here. And if we look at the mask, you can alt click on a mask and always see what it is. 
So there's the, the black, there's the white, and then there's these shades of gray here. Uh, and you can see it's these shades of gray here, where it's a little bit black, it's, you know, kind of a little bit darker. Um, that's where you've got some visibility. So that's a, a key idea with the mask that they don't have to be completely showing or not showing. You can be in between. And it's that in-between state that's going to become super valuable when we start lo looking at uh, luminosity masks. But uh, we'll we'll come back to that. So let's look at like an actual adjustment you'd want to make to this image. Um, you know the the sky to my taste is just too bright, especially over here. But just kind of in general, I want to put the attention on the image more in the detail of the stonework here in the Sagrada Familia, not on the sky. That's not really the, the point of the image to me. So if we want to darken that down, we could create a curves adjustment and we could start to just simply darken down the sky, but of course uh, it's manipulating everything in the image so the building is just kind of getting um, just really kind of obliterated here. So. Um, that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to get rid of this this mask. We'll we'll come back to that, and I'm just going to hide this layer. So what we'd want to do is use a, a mask on this curve, but only show the sky parts of this curve layer, right? Because they look good, but not these building parts. So we need something that's relatively kind of white out here and relatively black in here to show the parts of the curve we want. So. Um, if we just want to select the sky, it seems like the magic wand, which um, you know is basically going to select areas of similar color and brightness, um, might be the tool we want to play with. You know, with a magic wand, you can sort of uh, click on an area; it's going to select a bunch of similar pixels, and you know, based on your your tolerance, it will select only so far. So I could put a higher number in here if I want to be a little bit more selective. Um, so now I'm getting a slightly larger selection, or I can hold on the shift key, which will let me continue to add, you know, more areas to the image. But as I'm doing that, you know, a couple of things are showing up right away. One, um, I've got it set right now to contiguous, so it's it's only selecting stuff that's all connected. It's not getting into the little nooks and crannies between uh, the spires here and underneath the crane and down here in the the middle of these, I guess, flying buttresses. Um, so if we turn off the contiguous now we can select in these areas and now it's starting to get more deeply into these areas and we can select these bright areas get the brightest areas and try and get this and that looks you know pretty good we've got the sky selected um, looks like it even got into these you know little bits of sky that are in between even around the scaffolding um, that's probably uh, you know about as good as it's going to get with uh, with this uh, uh, magic wand tool. So why don't we go ahead and apply this to this curves layer so we can simply add a mask and this will just apply the selection as a mask. And so what we get here is we've got the skies we wanted um, super white and the you know the foreground here is black so we know the sky is gonna get darker and um, the building is not going to. So um, when I click that on, you can see that's a lot better than the original. If I just shift click the mask, it turns it off temporarily. So here was the original look, and here it is when we applied this, you know, layer mask to protect the image. So uh, a couple of things we see right away. First, um, the magic wand did not uh, not get in here, so we didn't make the the best selection. So we could go ahead and and refine this and try and fix that. But there's there's some other issues as we look around the image here. We've got kind of the same problem here. Um, as we look at the before and after, you take a look at these spires here. If we zoom in a bit, you can see that they're, they really look kind of funny, and that's because it selected parts of these spires. Um, we've got some issues here in the crane where the that looks a little bit funny, kind of coming in here. Uh, if we look at the crane over here, um, you know, it's got kind of a white edge to it. It's just, it's just not very clean. Um, and you know we could play with the refine edge tool that you know kind of cleans up edges um, and do a lot of things like that but no matter what we do with the magic you know wand here um, it's probably not gonna look totally realistic and and even if it does it's gonna it's gonna take hours to uh, to really kind of get the the selection that I want here so uh, we need a, a different approach um, and that's where luminosity masks come in so 
Um, if we think about what we're trying to do here with this image, we wanted to create a mask that, that more or less looks like this, right? Where the sky is selected and the building is not, but we want it to have a little bit more subtlety so the transitional areas on the edges look more real. And also, you know, if we look at this, the, the corners have gotten really dark here, and I, I don't want to necessarily darken all of the sky uh, the same amount. I really want the brightest areas to darken down uh, quite a bit, but these darker areas, you know, I'd, I'd rather that they either stay the same or maybe only darken a little bit, um, which would cause the overall contrast in the sky to diminish, but I just, I don't want these super dark corners. So, um, what I really want to do is make a selection more or less based on the brightness, right? If I could just select these brightest areas here the most, and then these darker areas here that are still, you know, lighter than most of the building, if we select them a little bit less, and then the darkest areas, I don't need to be selected at all. Um, that would make a pretty good mask. And that's essentially what luminosity masking is all about. So, um, if, we start creating luminosity masks in channels, which is kind of the standard way of doing it, you get these channels. And channels are basically um, a way of temporarily saving a selection or a mask. Or that's that's one of the things you can do with a channel. So these uh, channels here that are marked lights, one, two, three, five, et cetera, um, they basically are um, selections based on the tonal values in the image. And so we've got the uh, the lightest values here, and now a little bit more restrictive to the lightest value. So now there's a little more separation from light and dark. Um, and you can see you just really get selective to just the brightest parts of the image, or you can select the dark. So it's the inverse. And now the darkest parts of the image are selected. So you can create all sorts of different uh, luminosity masks. And I've got other tutorials on how to do that. But uh, we're just going to go and grab this. So like I said, channels are a good way to sort of store um, these selections, they're not actually doing anything to the image the way they are here. Um, but now we can use it to create a selection. And you can't really see the marching ants, but I did just select that. Um, and when I come back to the image here, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. New curves adjustment layer. And we can see that because I had selected the luminosity mask, it's now applied. And we can see that this is identical to the channel we looked at just a second. So now it actually is doing something. It's controlling the way that this curve adjustment is going to get applied to the image. And we know that it's going to apply um, most in these bright areas in the sky and in the foreground parts of the, the lit, lit building. A um, little bit to the moderate parts of the sky and the darkest corners here are not going to get adjusted. And you know, more importantly, uh, the building in the foreground is really going to be unaffected because it's basically black. So let's go ahead and make our adjustment. Just pull the sky down here. And you can see that looks pretty good. Um, you know, there's no issues around the crane. Uh, the, this uh, gantry here looks pretty good. If we zoom in to the spires where we had issues before, um, those look pretty clean. You remember uh, before. Things were looking pretty rough, right? These white edges, um, things were kind of blotchy here um, with our luminosity mask. It's just a much more natural selection that got everywhere, um, really in kind of one one step. Now it's not perfect because as I click on this, you know, it is darkening down the stained glass and these lights, and I probably don't want to do that. Uh, and there's just a simple fix for that is to put a, a group on your your layer here. So now. This layer is you know, living inside this group, and we can actually mask everything that's inside the group. So we just put a, a mask on, so this is showing everything, and just go over to a paintbrush, and we can just simply brush out these foreground areas, which basically means um, you're gonna intersect these two masks. I'm gonna show this luminosity mask adjustment, but only in the areas outside of this area that I just painted black. So you can see here as I turn this on and off, the stained glass is getting activated um, on and off here, um, but the sky adjustment remains. So now we have a really nice adjustment to the sky there with a the luminosity mask. Um, super quick and easy and just looks um, a whole lot better than what we were able to get with the magic wand, which is pretty much the, the closest uh, built-in Photoshop tool. And that is what luminosity masks are all about.